Thank you, thank you, Hush Chairperson. Speaker, the idea to pin the hopes of entire nation on a state-led infrastructure to revive the economy when the state itself has no capacity is misguided, if not utterly foolish. The minister's statement is nothing short of rhetoric because the reality is that to use infrastructure to revive this economy will require a state that has capacity at all levels, both administrative and technical, something which currently does not exist in government. Since 1994, the little technical and maintenance capacity that was there was destroyed and today, everything starting with the most basic things such as drawing of plans, government rely on third party entities who have collude, inflate prices and half the time don't ever bother to do the work but still get paid. There is not even capacity to enforce a contract to ensure that that was paid for its, de for its delivery. The government cannot build and maintain schools, cannot build and maintain hospitals and clinics, cannot build and maintain roads, water infrastructure, sanitation, and many other basic infrastructures. While this is the state of affairs within the state as far as infrastructure planning, execution and maintenance are concerned, there are more concerning fundamental issues where the government planned based on Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa misguided faith in the private sector. Mr. Ramaphosa announced that the government will allocate 100 billion rents to the infrastructure with the hope that this will unlock further trillion rents investment from the private sector. Gear, Asgisa, and NDP said the same and none of these achieved their intended outcomes. Even the national infrastructure maintenance strategy failed because the Department of Public Works that is the custodian of all state properties, does not have its capacity, but outsource everything while engineers employed in the department are reduced to administrators and secretaries. To want to do the same thing again with the so-called economic reconstruction and recovery plan, and what the minister just presented and expect different outcome is a true definition of insanity, made worse by corruption and political and technical incompetence of the part of Mr. Ramaphosa and his collective in the cabinet. The only way infrastructure spends by a government anywhere in the world has led to economic growth, created jobs, and play a meaningful role to reduce inequalities was when the state led and controlled the plan, execution, and had an influence in the majority of up and downstream business opportunities. This was the case with the World Reconstruction and Development in 1994 after the World War II. It is how China built its economic foundation to become the fastest growing economy in the world. And it is also the case here in South Africa to when the colonial calm apartheid was able to develop some form of sustainable economic growth over a longer period of time. To achieve this, we must have a state-owned infrastructure capacity to deal with the majority of infrastructure that is old and collapsing because of their lifespan was reduced by poor maintenance. We must establish a state-owned housing construction company, state-owned roads construction company, and immediately abolish tenders for construction and maintenance of government infrastructure. We must build state internal capacity to deal with large scale projects, particularly if, as it relates to the life cycle of infrastructure operation and maintenance. This means planning of infrastructures as building, buildings, roads, vehicles, hospitals, equipment, border scanners, water purifications and dams, electricity power plants and transmission lines, telecommunication towers and other infrastructures must include a clear plan of maintenance as the basis of determining the project possibility. A clear infrastructure plan should also include details such as a number of jobs per project, duration of the jobs, local material that will be used in the project, details of the beneficiaries of up and downstream. Lastly, each year, government, including municipalities and SOEs, must be able to consolidate a report on infrastructure maintenance through the office of the president to parliament. Unless we do these basic things, we will have a whole president being paraded open, some opening some way mega 
projects owned by his white donors, like it happened in Pretoria, and their projects do not even meet basic BEE targets. To them, BEE is the afterthought, and those ones in the ruling party are happy to receive shares of projects they know nothing about.